How's it going fellow traders? This is Magic Trader here and this is the CFTC report for January 2nd, 2018. So let's get into the data. First let's get this set up here. There we go. Beautiful. So let's take a look at gold first. Gold. Here we go. So what do we see with gold? So the institutions um, drop price into a monthly area of demand. Now we're seeing that demand being filled in, right? This candle here is the candle that represents the data. What does the data show? That the institutions added to their long positions. They used to have 202,000 positions long, and now they have 241,000 positions long. But what have they done with their shorts over that same week? Increase shorts from 66 to 60 uh, to 78,000. Excuse me. And um, during this process, we used to be at 82%, right? That was uh, up here, but so overexposed to the long side that they had to take profits on that, on those longs. And now we're rallying back up to those same areas, but look, we're at a really nice 76% long exposure right so net positions is still a hundred uh, high 163,000 positions to the positive and it's interesting that shorts are being added to because we are just about to react from a weekly supply area what happens when price hits a weekly supply area we get a move to the downside so it's a good idea that they're adding shorts at these highs because what they will try to do is get a better entry on the longs. So what happens is, you know, we're going to have an, we have another candle that's been formed here. And next week's data will be, um, will show us what, uh, what is going on with this candle here. Most likely longs are being added to and uh, possibly even shorts as well. And why is because they add shorts up here. When price drops down here, they can close off those shorts and any long positions that they opened up here, it will be as if they open up those long positions down here. So they're basically ac accumulating size for their long positions and doing it at uh, different ranges in price. So. So this week we're going to be uh, reacting to that weekly supply area. So I'm assuming, I'm, I'm expecting price to drop down here. That might take a, a couple weeks to do, but that's what I'm assuming is going to happen. So I want to see a move down to the weekly area of demand here. And this is where I'm going to be interested getting in long. Because I think all the numbers, everything is coming together uh, nicely for a move like that. All right, let's go to the next one. What do we see with oil? Institutions close a little bit of their long positions, reducing longs from 772,000 to 762,000. That comes as we get this push upwards here. So we get a push upwards and they close off some longs for uh, some profit taking. Uh, shorts pretty much remain cooled off, but look at this. I mean, we're still at 85% long exposure, so that's very high. Right now, we're reacting from a daily area of supply, and it's this area that I'm expecting price to drop from. Now, here's the deal. We got overextension on the weekly. So, you know, we see price reacted from a monthly demand area and has been pushing up, pushing up, pushing up, and hasn't stopped since that reaction so ideally we'd like to get a drop downwards into a weekly area of demand so we can take longs again the only thing is is that this overextension on the weekly and this area not creating a nice two to one move away and all this busyness here makes this area a little a little bit uh, lower odds to take any long trades from so what I'm going to be waiting for is uh, to see some profit taking on these longs, a drop, and then I want to see momentum shifting. When I see momentum shifting, and I see all these numbers looking better, because right now they're so 
overly exposed to long side that getting in long with these type of numbers is not a good idea. We want to see longs down here in, this, in the 70s or high 60s. That would be ideal. So I am waiting to get in long here um, and I'll be watching to see if there's any momentum shifting if we get a drop into this area over here. And so let's take a, the U, take a look at the U.S. dollar. So right now we're sitting within a weekly area of demand. As price was dropping down towards that demand zone, they increased long positions from 28,000 to 34,000. At the same time, they also increased short positions from 26 to 32,000. Long exposure sits at 52%, and uh, we're at a positive 2.1 thousand positions. So. This is a badly formed area, but very good up, very good chance that we get a push upwards from this area because it's still a weekly area of demand that caused the removal of this area here. So it's an important one. Even though it's poorly formed, it still served the purpose. So it's, it's, it's very possible to see a push upwards in price. Uh, considering what the euro is doing, it looks like that we are going to get uh, a push upwards from here. So, uh, long exposure 52%. So, I think eventually this area breaks and we see a, a push downwards. So, with this being such a poorly formed area, I think a push upwards here, a momentum shift, and then a breakdown. That's what I'm seeing. And these numbers are good 52% long, but bearish bias, right? All this time, bearish bias. So, waiting on this one for now. And um, when I see something set up, I'll, uh, I'll take a trade. Aussie. So we saw a huge drop in long exposure, right? They used to have 93,000 positions to the long side. And all of a sudden, boom, we were at 38,000 positions to the long side. And then it's been growing, 38, 38, 45. So uh, shorts are also high at 65,000 positions up from 51,000 and that came as we are moving upwards into a weekly supply formation. So very good chance that we see a reversal hence why they're adding shorts. Price get here, a momentum shift and then move to the upside. And By that time they'll have increased their long exposures back up and these numbers will probably go back into the positive. So that's what I'm watching for and I'm going to be patient until that happens. US CAD, we see an increase in longs from 25,000 to 34,000, also an increase in shorts from 42,000 to 49,000 and that's as price drops from that weekly supply imbalance that we've been looking at for quite some time. So we hit the weekly supply imbalance and now we're dropping right towards this area of weekly demand. So it's a decent area of weekly demand. It didn't necessarily cause anything important to happen except for breaking a trend line, but that's pretty much it. So 59% of the overall exposures geared to the short side were still short biased, right? Although these last two weeks were a little bit more in the neutral category, which is good. We should be. Uh, so increase in shorts, we get the drop, and we are also increasing in longs. So what does that tell us? You know, this is a tricky chart because we've got the three-month area of demand and control, but we have a monthly downtrend. So, you know, this wouldn't... If we didn't have a three-month area of demand and control, I would definitely take shorts right up here. If price rallied up here with the U.S. dollar, I'd take shorts all the way down. But because we've got that three month area of demand, I'm going to be holding off on taking any trades here because it's just too risky. Very, very risky. Price can come up here and then consult, consolidate and break higher. So I'm just not going to take any trades. The data suggests that we are going to continue a move to the downside, but, um, but it's too risky for me to take any trades. So passing on that one. Now we have uh, US dollar, Swiss franc. We got that monthly area of supply and control. Price breaking through a weekly area of demand right here. As that happens, long exposures drop from 45,000 to 41,000. And short exposure drops from 31,000 to 24,000. The net effect is long exposure increases 
from 59% of the overall portfolio to 62%. Net positions increased from positive 13,000 to positive 16,000. So what do I see happening here? I think there's a really good trade here because um, there's, there's room for a price to move into this area here. And we have an official area of weekly supply, although the formation of this candle is really poor. I think we can get a move to the upside and then a move downwards like that even further. So I am I'm actually looking for shorts up in this area, but I'm going to be taking them when I see momentum shifting to the downside because of this formation here of the weekly candle. Okay, next we got the euro. What do we see? Euro longs increase from 208,000 to 236,000 positions. This is like a record. Okay. So that comes as we move upwards, breaking through a weekly area of supply. And now we got a weekly area of demand down here. I have a trade set up to take a long. Uh, long exposure 68%, which is a good healthy number. And we got net positions to uh, uh, plus 127,000 positions. So definitely price is going to go higher. It's a matter of getting in at the right spot. So I got my entry located within this area here on the weekly demand. All I need is price to drop down and then I'm taking trades to the upside. Key pound US dollar, same thing with the pound. We see an increase in longs from 76,000 to 93,000. And we also see an increase in shorts from 63,000 to 77,000. So longs become a little bit more aggressive as we push upwards here. And shorts become a little bit more aggressive, uh, actually coming out of cooled off territory into a neutral, more neutral territory. Long exposure sitting at a really nice 55%, and that positions at a positive 16,000. I'm waiting for a move downwards, momentum shift, and then I'm taking long positions. Looks like that's what the institutions are planning on doing is to take price all the way up, right up here. So I'm going to get in right here when I see momentum shifting. All right, so let's take a look at the US dollar Japanese yen. We see um, long still remaining aggressive, 161,000. Uh, shorts being closed off as price drops. But we're still at these highs, you know, 81, 82%. And I'm ex still expecting a move to the downside from this weekly area of supply. So I believe that's going to happen when the when the US dollar finally breaks through that weekly area of demand and we see a push lower. And um, but there might be a little bit more consolidating here and before that happens because it's suspected that the US dollar is going to rally in, in price, right? It's going to rally up just like uh, we're expecting the euro and the pounds to drop. So uh, that's what I think is going to happen with this one based on the data. Let's go to the last one. So we have the Kiwi, and we see that longs dropped from 18,000 to 15,000 positions, and we also see that shorts dropped from 35,000 to 32,000. That came as price was rallying upwards into this weekly area of supply, nested within this monthly area of supply. I'm expecting a momentum shift, and then price to drop. That's what I'm watching for, and if you take a look at the data, it is a bearish bias with negative 16.9 thousand positions. Okay, net positions. So that is what I uh, see with the data. It looks like the institutions are um, going to be, you know, they, they've they spotted the trend. They know what direction they want to take the, the large currencies. They want to take the euro higher. They want to take the pound higher. And they filled in uh, a bunch of their positions during the holidays when uh, when people weren't paying too much attention except for the pros and um, so they filled in their orders they let price rally they let uh, the demand exhaust and it looks like now we're in the phase where price is going to retrace back to their original spot where they can fill in their orders again so that's exactly where I'm going to be looking to to get into the markets and then I'm going to ride the wave alongside the institutions all right guys so that is it for this week. That's your CFTC report. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're going to use it to make you some money this week. And uh, until next time, have a great week trading.
Take care.